Hello and welcome to part four of my series of videos which are a response to an open letter to Neil deGrasse Tyson regarding the flat earth by D. Murphy 25. In this video I'm going to deal with question four which concerns the atmosphere. Question four. How are we breathing right now? How can there be a high pressure system next to a low or negative pressure system without movement from high to low? So the conventional answer is that gravity holds the air to the earth. But if I was to evacuate the container to a fraction of the perfect vacuum of space, turn it upside down and puncture the bottom, what do you think would happen? Well, the air would rush in and fill the container. So, how does this much weaker vacuum manage to overcome the much stronger gravity near the surface? How is it that you can heat the air and it... Right, okay, that's enough just now. Um, so, I think first of all he's using the idea that if you have a fluid, a gas or liquid, that has a pressure within it, and that that pressure will tend to evenly distribute itself throughout the fluid. And if you have a buildup of high pressure in one part of the fluid, the fluid will flow from high pressure to low pressure, which is generally true. However, if you have extra forces at work, you can maintain what's called a pressure gradient which means you can maintain a situation where you have high pressure near low pressure. Uh, now on Earth, there is a pressure gradient. So that situation exists. The pressure of the atmosphere drops with height. So the higher you go, the lower the pressure um, the atmosphere is. So that means that there must be a force working. So the situation actually exists that he is pretty much claiming can't exist. It does exist. There is a pressure gradient. A fact that no flat earther has any explanation for. Um, now, this, uh, this um, example that he gives about holding a bottle so if you evacuate a bottle, hold it upside down put it, and put a hole in the bottom, the, the air will rush up and fill the bottle. Well, yes, of course it will. Because the pressure gradient from the bottom of the bottle to the top is very little. It's virtually negligible. It's not, there is a slight pressure gradient, but it's very, very small. So the, the pressure inside the bottle will just reach the same pressure as the gas surrounding it. That's all that will happen. It's completely different from the situation that he's comparing it to. Um, it's just one of those things flat earthers say that's just really, pretty much just dishonest. It's not a real comparison. If you're holding a bottle inside your hand, the pressure inside the bottle will just reach the same pressure as the, ga as the air around you. Now also, um, well, although we say that space is a vacuum, it's not an absolute vacuum. It's just a place where the gas pressure is very, very low. So as you go from the surface of the Earth to space, um, the pressure of the, the gas pressure just drops and drops till it gets to virtually zero, and then you're in space. Right. Perfect vacuum of space. Turn it up. The next bit is about here. Right, okay. How is it that you can heat the air and it will rise against the force of gravity? Wouldn't the air right, okay. leave the Earth once the sun heats the air? Rising hot air is just an example of buoyancy, which I've explained in two videos that I've done. Within a fluid that has a pressure gradient like you have on Earth, 
which is a vertical pressure gradient, the pressure pushing down on top of an object is very slightly less than the pressure pushing up from below. If the object weighs less than the amount of air that would have been there, then it doesn't have enough weight to counteract the upward pressure of the gas and it rises. That's buoyancy. You can only have it because you have a pressure gradient and you can only have a, a pressure gradient because there's a force acting on the uh, fluid which means that the further down you go, the more pressure there is. Now, rising hot air won't go all the way into space because as it rises, it will cool. It's... Uh, anyway, but, so hot air rising is just an example of buoyancy because hot air will be less dense than the air surrounding it. So it will just rise like a hot air balloon or a helium balloon or... Similarly to a piece of wood floating in water, it's the same thing. It's just because it's less dense than the surrounding fluid, therefore it's got less weight than the surrounding fluid that would take up the same amount of space. Therefore it doesn't have enough weight to counteract the upward pressure. That's all it is. If gravity is the only thing holding the air to the surface of the Earth against the tendency of a high pressure system to escape to a low or negative pressure system. Yeah, well, like I said, that we have a situation on Earth where you do have a pressure gradient and the, the air is not flowing from a place of high pressure or low pressure to redistribute the pressure. We have a pressure gradient. And when the air is heated, and so is less affected by a gravitational pull, shouldn't it then succumb to the force exerted towards a region of negative pressure? If, as current scientific opinion suggests, a high pressure system can exist adjacent to a negative pressure system? No, not scientific opinion, observational fact. That does exist. Then there should be a boundary condition of equilibrium where the force the atmosphere doesn't have a boundary as such. There's no point where you say, right, this is the atmosphere and this is space. It doesn't work like that. A gas does not have an exact boundary like a liquid will have. Gases just don't do that. Towards pressure equalization equals the opposing force of gravity. Thus, any change to the conditions on either side should disturb the equilibrium, wouldn't it? Um, I, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. What? What? Change to the conditions on either side should disturb the equilibrium. Well, there isn't a boundary. Um, wouldn't a rising column of warm air disturb that boundary layer? It's one of those things that flat earthers say that's so wrong, it's hard to kind of reply to it. There is no boundary. Rising warm air will cool as it rises and then fall again. And there isn't any genuine problem with any of this. There's an atmosphere on the earth because the earth has a gravitational field holding the atmosphere to the earth. That's why it has an atmosphere. That You might not like that, but that's the way it is. We know there's a force because things have weight and weight is a force. Anything that you could do that you would consider exerting a force on something, say with your, with your hand, you can achieve the same effect with the weight of an object. Say for example, you could stretch a spring apart. Well, you could hang an object on a spring and it will stretch the spring. You could compress a spring with your hands, pushing it together. Well, you can put a weight on top of a spring and it will compress the spring. You could place a, punk, a plank of wood between two piles of bricks, two piles of bricks, and push the middle of the wood down with your hand so that the wood bends. 
Well, you could put an object on the wood and it would bend the wood as well. You can pull something with your hand and make it accelerate. Or you drop something and it accelerates towards the ground. All of that shows you that weight is a force. All of the things that you would consider exerting a force on something, you can do the same thing with the weight of an object. Therefore, there is a force pulling things towards the ground. Everything tells us that that's true. From the fact things accelerate, to the fact that an object could bend a plank of wood, to the fact that there's a pressure gradient in the atmosphere. All of that tells you that there is a force. We call that force gravity. That holds the atmosphere to the earth. And as you move away from the earth, the, the pressure, the gas pressure just decreases to the point that you get to outer space where it's virtually zero. That's all there, there is to it. There, there isn't any problem with any of this. It, it, it's completely fine. There are no genuine problems. This question, the things that, are, that he says here, are just the typical type of things that flat earthers do to try and create the impression that there's some massive problem going on when there isn't any at all. This just isn't even like a proper question. <laughs>